All right, all right, all right. Here we go, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. We have a brand new season. It's summer 2024, and the Texas Fly Fishing Report has been rejuvenated. Here we go. Hi everybody and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing and News Report. My name is Shannon and I hope, I hope that YouTube pushed you here and you got to the right place. I've been having a lot of trouble with YouTube pushing my content to the right place. So let's hope it gets to you. I know I've got 4,000 subscribers. That's fantastic. I thank all of you for subscribing. Always like if you already subscribed and subscribe if you haven't already done so. So I'm going to rely heavily on my notes today because there's a lot going on and a lot of changes here. You know, I brought back the uh, the reports because uh, going through them and trying to optimize them to get YouTube to pay attention, I realized that there's a lot of little nuggets in there. So let me just go ahead and read my script here and I'll tell you what you can expect and what is going on right now in Texas fly fishing. Welcome everyone to the Texas Fly Fishing News Report. I'll be leaning heavily on my notes today to try and keep myself on track for this new format of the old Texas Fly Fishing Report. Here's how it works. I'm breaking the report down into small bites that you can click on in the description. Down in the description, there's a timeline with the different topics. Go down there. Every time I bring you one of these reports, I'm going to take the extra time it takes to break it down so that if you want to skip through this and you don't want to hit fast forward, you just go down there, click on what topic that interests you, and get it on. Topics include hot reports from different regions of Texas, video dropped in by me from places I've been fly fishing. You know, I like, <laughs> those are the most popular videos for some dumb reason, but anyway, that's what it is. Uh, and I'll be dropping some in this video, this very video from the Texas Gulf Coast. And what I want to do is kind of cultivate a look back at the past. I've been doing this uh, on YouTube since 2007. It's only recently in the last year or two gotten fairly serious and uh, fairly productive. So that is what that is about. I want you guys to take a look back and see what's going on. So. That's the format. That's the way the Texas Fly Fishing and News Report's gonna be. Hopefully I'll have news and reports and people reporting to me like I do today from guide Alex Guthrie in East Texas. So, today we will have a look at the fly fishing on the Texas Gulf Coast and all the way back here to North Texas where we have taken a real beating from the weather this season. And when I say beating, I mean beating. I will leave out my old weather reporting because it's just as easy for you to look out the window of your capsule and see what's happening for yourself. I mean, wherever you are, it's probably different from where I am in Texas. It's crazy. In North Texas, we have had a tornado that wiped out Ray Roberts' access. We, we, the lake is closed down and it will be closed down until early July, supposedly. Uh, and here's some footage of that tornado damage. So there's that. Um, South Texas, inland, drought. The Texas Gulf Coast, tropical storm Alberto. Alberto, he brought us a four foot surge down in South Texas and further up the coast, we had surge up the coast, halfway up the coast, I don't know how far up it went. Amazing surge for such a small tropical storm. Imagine what's gonna happen when we have a real hurricane. Ah, not if, but when. So the water is still dropping from that surge. There's, so that's three distinct patterns for the state of Texas. To me, that's pretty unusual, but maybe that's a new normal. Drought, floods, and the Texas Gulf Coast, which stands on its own with the tropical storms and whatever else you can think of going on there. I think there's gonna be at least two distinct weather patterns across Texas for a while. Maybe it's El Nino, La Nina, or jet stream, or, or tropical storm stream, or whatever. But it looks like we've got a state that's about cut in half, right about south of Waco, north of Austin. And, and from one variation to the other is super distinctive. The lakes on the fringes, like Bridgeport, west of me, like Whitney, Central Texas lakes, they're holding nicely. 
they're fishable and into their summer mode. The word from multiple sources is that the Brazos below PK is flow is right. So when that is right, the fly fishing is right. I have videos on the Brazos fly fishing. Check them out. I did get a report, as I said earlier, Texas fly fishing guide Alex Guthrie of Fly Fish Fork says the three lakes he guides on, Fork, Hawkins, and Bob Salen, all have bass in the summer or early late morning pattern. While Hawkins offers brim on fly on by sight casting on bed. So if you're a brim catcher, hey man, those are great fish, you know. That 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 fish is One of the most beautiful fish there is is, is uh, the brim family, and I'm going to be taking the photographs of those guys. So you can check out my website. It's my name, S H A N N O N D R A W E dot com, right there, and uh, see that work start to show up there. I, if you want to, if you want to send in a report, if you're a guide, I'll be glad to report for you. I mean, it's free, free advertising for you. Um, helps me out a little bit um, not a lot and there's one other place that has no fish whatsoever don't go there it's the Paluxy River so if you don't want to catch any fish don't go to the Paluxy on the Texas Gulf Coast there's so much to talk about guys since I was there last week we had that tropical storm which jacked the water levels and brought some rain to South Texas finally you can see from earlier this month that the fly fishing on the lower Laguna Madre was fantastic. I have become a firm believer in following the moon for the bite on the coast. The tides are always in play as well, but the influence of the tropical storm may last another week or so. So keep that in mind. Don't just get up and run to the coast because of uh, two reasons actually. One is the moon phase, which is heading towards a full moon, and that makes me believe that the fish eat at night and just look at you like you're stupid when you throw a fly in front of them during the day it's, it's really wacky so that's what I believe they are bringing Texas a historic speckled trout fishery vis-a-vis -vis the new regulations so the new regulations stop you at 20 inches um, I think you can catch maybe one over 26 or something like that but the slot between 20 and 26 I think it is you can't pick any man all the specs I caught down there were at 19 which was, <laughs> I didn't get over 20 but those fish are big it used to be it was like 12 and 14s and now they're 19s so very cool so the week I was there, the moon was waxing crescent into a quarter and for the week ahead, we have a full strawberry moon and then slowly waning coming week, in the coming week. I like your odds and for a night bite somewhere like the lights around Rockport or the piers at Out Off Tomei Park. There's a picture of Out Off Tomei here, pink right there. The, the surge flooded the actual piers and, and the boat launches, so keep that in mind. I, you know, it should clean everything up really well, but I don't know what that's going to do to the fishing. You tell me. Next report will be in July, and I will be including fly fishing club meetings across this huge state. There are a surprising number of fly fishing clubs in Texas, but most of them suffered during COVID, and the membership is aging quickly. These guys are getting old. So if you're a young fly fisher looking for a community, get in there and shake things up. Come on guys, we gotta have a youth movement in the fly fishing club life. We can take it over. We can turn it over on its head. All you gotta do is show up. You, what you're gonna find is you're gonna learn stuff from these older guys. And they'll learn something from you if you're a young guy. And uh, that's what this is all about, in my opinion, is learning about everything you want. <laughs> everything. I'm still a sponge when it comes to fly fishing. I wanna know everything I can possibly know. So. Clubs is one way to do it, and if you really want to make a club successful, bring your friends with you and, and, and blow the thing up. Just blow these clubs up, make them young again, and uh, you won't regret it. So one of the other things I'm including is a tip for this episode, uh, for every episode of the, the news reports. And the tip this week is, and I don't know when, the, you know, maybe ten, maybe more than a week before the next one. This is so hard, it's so hot out here on the fly bar, it's incredible. But, 
the tip I have for you is to keep your fly lines clean. Now that we've got floodwaters, now that we've got surge, and now that all this river fishing is going on, there's a lot of sediment, a lot of, lot of dirt, a lot of debris, and it'll take the coatings off your fly lines. Be sure to make sure, clean and recoat your fly lines, people, because it'll make them easier to cast. I'm telling you, fly lines need to be slick. Dr. Slick makes some, some uh, different uh, types of finishes for fly lines, so check them out. If you're running a watercraft and wanting to manage your fly line on deck, be sure to check out the fly mats I make and sell. They come in different sizes and shapes and are available on my website, www.texasflycaster.com. Now, the future looks bright. These reports will get even better with information coming in from you guys out there getting it done in Texas fly fishing instead of sitting here in the bar waiting for your drink to arrive. That is how I believe this sport maintains grow and grows in a challenging place like Texas. I appreciate your watching and remember that you can skip to a particular spot in these reports by clicking the timeline down in the description. I can't emphasize that enough. If you don't see something you like going through in linear form, go down there and click on something. Last. This is not fun to talk about, okay? This is not th this is not the fun part. We've had fun. Now it's time to get serious. When we came into the dock at Out of Tomei Park last week, there was a dead body bagged on the on the dock, and we were waved off to the next boat launched by authorities. Uh, I don't get to see dead body bags very often. Or, hardly ever actually in the, out of the news business that I'm out of now. I don't have any more details, but apparently there was a three or four guys on a boat, barge capsized the boat, the, the guy's buddies made it, but he didn't make it. Was he wearing a PFD? I don't know, but this is what I'm telling you. Please wear your PFD just in case, at a minimum. The fish gods giveth and the good Lord taketh away. Remember, Wear your PFD if you have any questions about where you are, conditions, or just for safety's sake. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys. Check it out. We're going to come back at you with some other videos in between the reports, stuff like uh, look inside Los Pescadores, a whole lot of stuff. Just bits and pieces. We're going to put some, try to put some of that together into something coherent and show that to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. This is the last week, full week of June and then we go to July baby. <laughs>